New reporting today that Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin had some big plans, even bigger plans, before calling off his brief revolt. Western officials telling the Wall Street Journal that the Wagner leader planned to capture two of Putin's top ranking military leaders, the defense minister and the chief of Russia's general staff. Officials also say that Prigozhin sped up his plans after the Kremlin was tipped off. We have CNN's Nick Robertson with us now on this story. A fascinating development here. What can you tell Tell us, Nick. Yeah, Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, Valery Grasimov, the army chief of staff, these were the two men who Prigozhin had been ranting against publicly for months in advance of this situation. So there's context and history to the allegation or the supposition of the intelligence services that he was going to try to capture them. When Prigozhin went to Rostov-on-Don, that big Russian military headquarters with all his troops, uh, he said that that evening, uh, 9 p.m. that evening, uh, Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, had fled Rostov on Don. We're learning other details from other Russian uh, uh, security chiefs. Uh, 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 the Zolotov, the head of the uh, National Guard, said that they had got wind of Shoigu's, uh, of, of Prigozhin's plans to, to uh, challenge the authority, challenge the state. They got wind of those plans that were supposed to happen on the 22nd to the 25th of June, uh, and they had this from leaks. Now, Western intelligence say that they had picked up that Prigozhin was about to do something by an increase of level of communications uh, between in, in, internally in Russia's state security services. So this picture that's being painted, that Prigozhin was not just putting, was not just going to try to challenge the authority, he was actually going to capture and kidnap, it appears, we don't know to do what with, with the defense minister and the army chief of staff. It's quite a staggeringly brazen plot, but apparently people in his camp leaked to the Russian government what was happening. How is the Russian military situation destabilized at this point with this New York Times reporting that Sergei Sorovkin had advanced knowledge of last weekend's mutiny, assuming that is true? It's hard to know uh, and whether or not it's true because, of course, this is a time when uh, Western intelligence agencies would love to lo lo uh, put seeds of doubt in the minds of, uh, of the Russian government, particularly in the minds of in President Putin's mind right now. Uh, Sergei Sorovkin knew uh, Prigozhin. They would worked together uh, in Syria, both Prigozhin for his mercenary group, uh, Sorovkin as, as a general. Sorovkin last year had been made, put in charge of the Russian forces in Ukraine, and it actually stood up to President Putin. It's understood that he was the one that said, you have to pull out of the Kherson region. And Prigozhin liked Sorovkin. He said he was the only uh, Russian general worth a star. Now, it's not clear if that like, uh, mutual like, uh, not clear if that was a, a, a mutual uh, situation that uh, Sorovkin actually liked Prigozhin, but there's perhaps evidence that at least Prigozhin thought perhaps he could trust Sorovkin. We really don't know. But it appears when you sort of analyze what happened on the ground, whether or not he'd put some faith in Sorovikin or other generals, his ability to move into Rostov-on-Don, take control of the military headquarters, his ability to move troops further north, raises that very pertinent question, how many other military generals had wind of this, were actually on uh, Prigozhin's side. But in the case of Sorovikin, he very quickly, when this began to unfold, came out in a video uh, uh, telling uh, Prigozhin to back down. And it was noticeable that he actually had a Kalashnikov on his lap when he made that statement, which is, which is sort of bizar bizarre in itself. Yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, sort of Game of Thrones playing out as we see there uh, in the Russian military. Nick, thank you for the report. Boris? Let's expand the conversation now with retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. He's a former commanding general for the U.S. Army Europe and the 7th Army. General, great to share an afternoon with you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, first on President Biden describing Vladimir Putin as being weakened by this attempted coup. Uh, what is the biggest threat right now to his grip on power in Russia? You know, there's, there's a lot, uh, Boris. This... The, 
I'll just use Nick's words. Uh, it best describes it bizarre. You know, the last couple of years I was in the service in Europe, uh, there were daily intelligence reports coming across about Russia, and it was always speculation, uh, leaning toward confirmation bias, internal military rumors about what was going on in the Russian military from different channels, Kremlin power plays, uh, and you mix that all with the deception operations, the so-called Moskarovka that the Russians do all the time, would always be confusing. But that is now on steroids because of the actions over the past weekend. You have the personalities of Shoigu, Putin, Prigozhin, Surovoykin, as, as Nick just mentioned, Gerasimov, the chief of, of uh, the equivalent of the chairman of the Joint Staff. You also have another guy that hasn't been mentioned all that much, a, a guy named Zolotov, who's the, the uh, Russian National Guard commander, who's a Kremlin insider, all throwing out these rumors of how bad things are. But I got to tell you, uh, Boris, this is more of an understanding that uh, Russian military and their government is a, a proverbial nesting doll of dysfunction. <laughs> but it has gone on steroids right now in terms of all the craziness that's happening. And yes, Putin is weakened by all that. You can tell by the, the effects he's had over the last couple of days and what he's been doing to try and thwart the rumors that are swirling around his government and his military. Yeah, that kind of speculation uh, rampant, the sort of Kremlinology of who's doing what. There's always intrigue uh, around Putin and his generals. But on that note, you mentioned the confusion. How does that play out on the battlefield in Ukraine? Well, there's already reports now coming from inside of Russia, and these are rumors, again, they've not been verified, but Sarovoykin has been put in jail. So if the commander on the front is now in jail, not, may not be true, then that would cause more dysfunction because that boils down to the troop level, what's going on in the foxhole. And what we're seeing, too, combined with the potential for Ukraine's forces generating increasing momentum over the last several weeks and admitting they haven't even started the major counteroffensive yet, they're still conducting shaping operations, that would probably give uh, the Russian soldiers on the front line a little bit more pause and cause an even decreased morale on the front. Uh, Russian morale has not been very good since the beginning uh, uh, 16 months ago of this operation, this invasion. So it can only get worse. It can't get better. Uh, we have uh, looked into, or we are, I should say, looking into reports of the arrests that you mentioned. CNN is working to confirm them. So obviously we will bring that news uh, as it comes out. But should we anticipate a purge by Putin of some of his top officials, especially if he considers them threats? That, that could be a course of action, Boris, but truthfully, you know, I, I think there, there's a problem with that because Russia is currently in a defensive state. They have their defensive operations ongoing against a, an increase, like I said, an increasing uh, Ukrainian momentum on the front. So now is not the time you want to purge. You want to do a purge during peacetime when you can quickly replace commanders in the field. Now, we may see uh, more replacements of Russian generals, Russian colonels on the front. But truthfully, Boris, we've been seeing that since the beginning. The number of replacements due to ineffectiveness, inefficiencies, and death and casualties on the front line of senior leaders has just been remarkable in this campaign. It's a, a lot has occurred on the Russian side. We may see a purge. I wouldn't bet on that, but you could certainly see a lot of high-ranking officials replaced. I'm watching very closely uh, Gerasimov and Shoigu and what happens to them. Everyone seems to be focused on Prigozhin. What I'd like to see is what's happening inside of the Kremlin, and that could also affect this guy Zolotov, uh, the, the National Guard commander, because he is the true Kremlin insider. He, he's a general that's been inside the, the, the Kremlin, much like a lot of uh, our military or inside the Pentagon for a very long time, doesn't have the field savvy, but he's very close to Putin. You know, a, a nesting doll of dysfunction, quite an assessment from General Mark Hurtling. Thanks so much for being with us today.